are we going to do? Road trip. All aboard the Friday Football Focus Express as we hit the road for CIF quarterfinal highlights. Chose Pueblos is in the city they call Long Beach to face St. Anthony. Could the Chargers produce a W in the LBC? Lompoc traveled 200 miles to Rancho Cucamonga to battle Etiwanda. The Braves were hoping to return with their perfect record in tap. The Arroyo Grande Eagles soared to the Magic Mountain area to face a colossal challenge, Valencia. The St. Joseph Knights went to Kardashian land to face Division 5 top seed Calabasas. And Ventura and Rio Mesa left the bus at home. Would home cooking agree with the Cougars and Spartans? FFF is even a hit with the big screen industry. Hey, it's Billy Baldwin and you're watching Friday Football Focus. Now, from the bleachers to the end zones, gridirons up and down the coast. From the largest sports team on local television. Live Friday Football Focus. Welcome to another postseason edition of Friday Football Focus. I am Mike Klan. It's a 20-minute show tonight, a lot to cover. Everybody's goal is to practice on Thanksgiving. That means you are in the CIF semifinals. Can't do it unless you win tonight. Speaking of winning, Lompoc has won them all so far, 11-0. Tonight, the Braves on the road to face Etiwanda in a CIF Division IV quarterfinal game. Braves already up 22-0 in the first half. Cameron Davis adding to it. He's in the end zone, and it's 29-0 Braves midway through the second quarter. Lompoc back on the attack. Cameron Davis head to his favorite target, Shamar Savage. Savage scoots up field for a Braves first down. Davis looking for more in the air. Good coverage, and he's eventually taken down for a coverage sack by Alex Carnival. Lompoc's going to have to punt, and it's partially blocked, and it's Cameron Ward taking it before midfield, and Ward's going to go inside the 10. Braves defense stiffens right before the half, fourth and two. They try a trick play, looking for confusion. Hey, the Braves. They don't fall asleep on that. They stuff it, and Lompoc up 29-0 at the half. Third quarter, Etiwanda picked off by Gregory Lewis. That was easy. Lewis says, thank you very much. Back on offense, Mr. T, Toa Tawa. Nice pickup inside the 20. Davis, nobody open, scrambling. I thought he was going to get in here. Came very close to another touchdown. Knocking on the door, and that's Toa Tawa territory. He finishes the job. Touchdown Braves, and Lompoc up 36-0. At this point, Etiwanda just trying to score. McDowell looking for a big play downfield, but the center fielder is Anthony Manahan. Manahan with the pick. Nice return. First play of the fourth quarter. Let's get the kicker involved, Julian Arweo. 33-yard field goal is good. So is Lompoc. In fact, they're great. Lompoc records its second shutout in as many playoff games. This time, it's 46 to nothing. They have seven shutouts on the season. So a great bus ride home for Lompoc. Back from Rancho Cucamonga. Lompoc moves into the semifinals with a 12-0 record. They'll be back on the road next week to play at Corona Del Mar. Well, now to the Division II playoffs where Royal Grande was looking to get back to the CIF semifinals for a third straight season. Friday football focused senior reporter Dave Alley was at their game in Valencia. Thanks, Mike. This game marked the second time in four years these two teams had met in the CIF quarterfinals. In fact, a handful of the Eagle seniors actually dressed for that 2013 game as freshmen, including starting quarterback Sawyer May. But May, the three-year starter for AG, on crutches, out of action after an ankle injury suffered last week. Great start for the Eagles. Second play from scrimmage. Vikings with the ball, but it comes loose, and Nathan Witzig is right there to come up with a fumble. AG in business. Turnover would give AG great field position, and they would take advantage. Couple plays later, it's Cameron Johnson powering his way into the end zone. Two minutes in, and the Eagles had a 7-0 lead. Vikings, though, answered back. Game was tied up 7-7 on the next. Viking possession looking for more, but Aaron Thomas has his pass deflected right to Arroyo Grande's Cade Cunningham 
Eagles with another turnover. And once again, they would capitalize a couple plays after the INT quarterback, Zach Bullard, making the start in place of May. Connects with a wide open Trevor Alton, 38 yard touchdown pass. And the Eagles were back on top, 14 to seven. Vikings, though, responded right back in suing drive. Moises Haynes from short distance scores. Game tied up at 14. Teams would then trade field goals. The game was tied 17-17, but then the roof falls in for Tom Goosen and the Eagles after a key fourth down conversion in AG territory. Some trickery by Valencia. Pitch to Hayes, tosses to Connor Downs, who goes downfield and finds a wide open Javon Wilson. Touchdown, Vikings. That made it 24-17. He would later score with about a minute to go in the half. They would get the ball right back after an interception. Then with two seconds on the clock, Thomas, the Hail Mary, and the ball bounces right to Tim Wiggins. Can you believe it? Another Vikings score that type of night for Arroyo Grande. They trail 38-17 at the half, and this one would get away from them as the Eagles lose and lose big. Valencia beats Arroyo Grande 52-24. With the loss, Arroyo Grande has their 10-game winning streak snapped. Their season comes to an end. They wrap up the campaign with a record of 10-2. Reporting in Valencia for Friday Football Focus, Dave Alley. Back to you, Mike. All right, Dave, uh, tough way to end the first half for AG. Just a landslide there by Valencia. We appreciate you making the long drive, Dave, and I have a feeling you're going to make another one next week to get those long poke highlights. Well, after winning their first playoff game since 2001, Dos Pueblos hitting the road to Long Beach to face St. Anthony in a CIF Division 10 quarterfinal game. The Chargers' biggest win of the season came on the road earlier this month at Ventura, so hey, they were fine with the travel. The ASU Cronkite Sports Bureau also at the game. Always appreciate the, the first half highlights. First quarter, St. Anthony already at 14 0, but Dos Pueblos getting on the board. Kellen Roberts to his favorite target, Cyrus Wallace, 25 yard touchdown, cut the lead in half 14 7. St. Anthony responds, 18 yard rushing touchdown by BJ Busby, and the Saints lead it 21 7. Second quarter, beginning of that second quarter, Dos Pueblos quarterback. Roberts getting intercepted by St. Anthony's Elijah Bankston. He not only has the interception, it's a pick six. 28-7 St. Anthony. Still in the second quarter. DP getting back in the end zone. Roberts launching a bomb. Marcellus Gossett. Yeah, he's had a great year defensively, but yeah, he can play some offense as well. 60 yards on the catch and carry. It's 28-14. But boy, St. Anthony just kept coming, adding to their lead here. One yard touchdown catch by Anthony Moore. And then it's back in the end zone by the Saints one more time before the half. It's Nico Ragas with the touchdown grab. DP's defense gives up 60 points, and they lose tonight 60 to 28. But Nate Mendoza and about 30 plus Chargers seniors. What a nice way to end the season. They get their first playoff win since 2001. They come up short here in the quarterfinals, lose 60 to 28. They finish 9 and 3. Well, the St. Joseph Knights were trying to do what no one has done this year. That is beat the top seed in Division 5, Calabasas. Friday Football Focus reporter Trevor Saffel was at the game. He joins us live in studio. Trevor? Well, Mike, there was plenty of great athletes on the field tonight. For St. Joe's, you got C.J. Cole and Nate Guzman. They're both home run hitters. Calabasas has wide receivers Darnay Holmes and Keyshawn Johnson Jr., along with quarterback Tristan Jebbia. Well, the battle test at night's looking to shock the world with an upset over the undefeated Coyotes. Opening drive of the game, Jebbia drops back and fires for the end zone, but Mike Ramirez playing center field, and you can't spell Knights without the letters I-N-T. Great return all the way back to the 45, but St. Joe would miss their field goal attempt on that possession. Next possession for Calabasas, and the ref takes a tumble just before Jebbia plunges it in on the keeper for the game's first score. Ensuing drive for the Knights, and Dino Maldonado attempts a little shovel pass, but not sure who it's to. Pete Tello picks it off. Great field position. Calabasas would turn it into a touchdown. Later in the game, Johnny Wilson is going to catch a pass over the middle and not a defender in sight as he marches this one all the way down for the 65-yard touchdown. It's 21-0 Calabasas at this point. Next drive for Calabasas and Keyshawn Johnson Jr. gets in on the action with a little out route for the score. There's going to be, see, you're going to see Dad in the crowd watching on. There's Keyshawn. Coyotes roll in this one and turn a 35-0 halftime lead into a 42-19 win. St. Joe ends their fine season at 7-5. 12-0 Calabasas will play 
Roosevelt next week. And, hey, that's going to do it for me this season on Friday Football Focus. Been a great year. We'll see you next time. It's Trevor Saffel in studio. Back to you, Mike. We certainly appreciate all the hard work. Trevor goes out long distances, covers the game, rushes back, puts on the tie, does a great job for us. Cal Bass is hitting the road at Roosevelt next week. Well, more from Division 5 next as the Ventura Cougars hosted a CIF quarterfinal game against Capistrano Valley. They're also the Cougars. And Rio Mesa trying to take out the top seed in Division 8. The Spartan highlights on the way.